All right, beginning of day travel 10. I can't hold it up anymore because I got to hold the camera too. So me and Chance and Cindy have been having quite the discussion this morning <laughs> trying to figure out our route. First of all, let me say we stayed at the OK RV Park in, I don't know why Holbrook, I can- Holbrook, Arizona. Holbrook, Arizona. And it was OK. Um, I just filmed this morning a um, kind of a walkthrough review of the park. Go look at that if you haven't. It's an okay place to stop if you're going to the Petrified Forest. Um, it's nothing special. So anyway, the dilemma today. So here on our Lincoln Drive dash, it says to get to our next spot, which is in... Hurricane... Utah, Utah, which is going to be for not Zion three, three nights and three nights. So it says on the Lincoln Drive dash, it says it's 329 miles and five hours and 18 minutes, which would be doable. The problem is, is this doesn't have any way to put in the size, weight, length, height of our RV. And so it's just using regular um, Google Maps, which as you can see right there, that's what I have downloaded on it. And so it takes you some back roads right by the Grand Canyon. Uh, I checked um, with a friend of mine and they got snow last night. So um, it was just flurries. flurries, but still, I don't know the conditions of the road. So if you go to our trucker GPS, the Garmin, it says it's 476 miles and it takes us all the way to highway 15 and up so it's 150 miles further about two days um an hour what is it no that'd be three hours longer so it would definitely make it a two-day trip but it's all major roads and highways highways and i feel like they would be better maintained taken care of if we have an issue it'd be easier to get um help you know a tow truck driver or something out there so that i think that's what we're gonna do we've we've we're using our what is it cindy phone a friend yeah challenge <laughs> for this trip and we've called peggy peggy has not called us back she's has Jeez. lived in Kingman, Arizona. She's lived in Montana. She's lived in the places we've gone, maybe, or going. Maybe she can give us some insight on the road. So until we hear back... And we called a friend who's from Las Vegas. Yeah, and he was the one saying, well, you know, it's some pretty roads, but they are tiny. And Well, it's a two-lane road, not a major highway right. or interstate. So I think we're going to go ahead and go the long way. The other problem we've got is that, friend. yes, the other problem we've got is Kingman, Arizona, nor Henderson, Henderson allow any boondocking. So there are three gas stations in between the two. Even if it's a Cracker Barrel or anything, they don't allow it. So within the city limits. Fingers crossed. We're going to head down the road. All right. So we finally made it back on I-40 headed west. Um, clear skies. I guess it is a little cloudy, but not bad. The sun's out. And I tell you, I've never seen so many trains. They do a lot of traveling with step by train. All right, so Cindy and I have had this discussion, and she makes, she doesn't make fun of me, but she laughs at my decision-making process. So as it stands now, subject to change as we're going down the road, I've decided um, we're going to go the long way, 40 to 15. And here's part of my thinking, <clears throat> is I feel I have a, a, uh, deep desire to keep my family safe. Cindy is the most important thing to me in my life. 
and I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere, broke down where I can't get help for hours. Lord forbid we have some, you know, traveling marauders. You never know nowadays who we'd be stuck out there with no help. I'd rather be in a more populated area when we're traveling. And also, we don't have a fallback if something was to happen to this motorhome. We don't have a house to go to. We don't have a large savings. We're slowly working on building our savings back up in case we ever need an exit strategy to our full-time RV life. I'd have to go back to South Carolina. We'd have to move in with my parents or something. So I spend a lot of time not worrying, but thinking of ways to protect our home. And I think driving the 140 or 150 miles further is the smartest move for our family. It will be more expensive. Yes, I'll have, you know, probably $150 worth more in gas. And um, we have limited boondocking um, opportunities where we need it <coughs> on this route. So we may have to find a campground or you know, you just don't know, but those are the things that concern me and why Cindy's a much more free-spirited person that she's like, oh, it, you know, it'll be okay. Everything's fine. You know, God will take care of us and I agree he will, but I think we have to do our part. So we're going the long way until she changes my mind. So, oh. Okay, so now my two cents worth uh -oh, of the rebuttal. <laughs> oh, real quick, show these teepees when we get around this. Um... All right, well, I'll get started and I won't show it, so let me. It's right around this hill. Yeah, but that's pretty cool looking. I'm going to do it out my window over here. Probably see it better. It got your attention, didn't it? Yeah. That was the whole point. They succeeded. One up on the hilltop there. Okay, so what this is really about is Alex's comfort zone. And anxiety levels. And anxiety levels. I have anxiety in traffic. Um, as long as I can look on a map and I don't see where it says there's a height restriction um it is a two-lane road so that's going to slow you down going through small towns and stuff but in my opinion that's the more scenic route um driving highways is okay but you don't necessarily get to see the the cool stuff i think but that's fine. I'm not driving. I don't drive yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. You never know. Um, so I have to relent to the driver because he's the one driving. He's the one that has to be comfortable. He, you know, always gets us from point A to point B. So I defer to him. But yes, I am the more adventurous, the more, oh, we could just deter that a day and go see this too. But I'm going to relent to him because he is driving and he, in my opinion, is doing the hard work. Alec asked me a couple of miles back, we were debating some much about the route we were going to take today he said did you double check and make sure all the bay doors were locked nope sure didn't so we're pulling over at this rest area so we can do so you'd think this was the first time we've done this all right Ellie was correct we had not locked the bays so we got that done 
chance got to go for a walkabout and we're back on the road. Hopefully you can see the mountain over there. It has snow caps on it. That's the first little bit of sign of snow we've seen. And in Montana, depending on what elevation they're at, some of the peaks in Montana have the snow up there almost all summer, don't they? Yeah, at least through July. Pretty cool. So we just passed um, a sign we've never heard of this before. It said we were at the Arizona Divide, which was 7,200 feet. I'm looking at the elevation right now on the Garmin. It says we're at 7,255. That's almost, and we're climbing now. So I think today we're actually gonna be climbing higher than we did the other day when we crossed the Continental Divide. The V10 and this Ford chassis, I mean, we have got, I've got the cruise control going. We're going 60 miles an hour. And Cindy, if you point out the front window, you can see that, you know, we're still climbing and uh, all these people that say you have to have a diesel, you have to have a diesel, you have to have a diesel, I call BS. This V10 is a hell of a motor and it has taken us everywhere we want to go. So there you have it, whatever, whatever that is. From Alex, what it's work department. into some trees now yeah the only thing that's concerned me is we keep seeing the I think they're yellow they were yellow weren't they yes the yellow state signs that are either flipped up or flipped down that says beware of possible ice on the roads um, temperature has dropped down into the mid 60s we were at 73 degrees I think when we left Holbrook so I don't think we have to worry about it during the day right now, but I think, you know, when it gets dusk, we definitely want to make sure that we're off the road. Don't you have to have participation to have ice? You could. Precipitation? Yeah, you, yeah, but we don't know. Maybe <laughs> some water crossing the road from a creek. I don't know. I'm just saying, I see the signs, they make, they, they just give me something else to think about. I'm just saying, precipitation. And there could be a rainstorm headed no our way. No precipitation. <laughs> sure is nice to see all these trees and the mountains. And you, I don't know if you can see it, but those mountains just have a little tiny bit of snow on them. Which means we're high in elevation, right, Bob? We're at 7,000 feet. But to get snow, you had to have precipitation, <laughs> which means there could be some ice on the road in the higher elevations. So there, you're right. You do have to have precipitation. Per precipitation <laughs> and we've had it because there's snow okay but that precipitation could have happened a long time ago because could have happened, happened last night because on the weather app there's no call for precipitation or participation <laughs> this is a pretty area We've never been this part of I 40. This all. part of I 40 at all. Well, once we got out of Gallup, New Mexico, yeah. we had never been on that part of I 40. So they got a brake check area, so 
We must be getting close to the down. Yeah, here's the sign right here. Let's see if it tells you. Doesn't it usually tell you what the grade is and yeah. for how long? Yeah, you notice the truck in the straight down position. Those always give Alec a nervous. Six percent. It starts in three quarters of a mile. Safety pull out a half a mile. What does this one say? Trucks, vehicle with trailers use brake check area. So we're starting at 6,526 feet. And it says 6% the next six miles. So what I normally do is when the vehicle gets up to 70 miles an hour, I hit the brakes, slow it down to about 50. And then I let it go again so I don't overheat my brakes. Like I'm slowing down right here. That truck just did his brake too. I saw his brake lights light up. The six miles is a long way to go downhill. already dropped down to 6,250 feet. Wow. You hear the tow haul mode change gears to help keep me going slower. truck is trucking along pretty fast. Oh, he hit, finally hit his brakes. Now we're down to 6,100 feet. Isn't that pretty? Looks like the worst is behind us, doesn't it? We'll see. Are we still pretty steady? We're not falling as fast. Alright, so the um, we're down to 6%. We're still going downhill a little bit, but we're at the bottom of the 6% grade, and it took us down to 5,219 feet. 5,219. Not even doing. So we saw just a tad of rope work. We haven't seen much of that today. Look at this beautiful. We're almost at Kingman, Arizona. There's some road work over there on the other side. What were you saying, Bob? I was just talking about the road work back there that we've been so fortunate today that we have not seen much at all. Yeah, it's been nice. And the condition of the roads on this section of I-40 have been not good too. Just some more of our views today. It's amazing how they cut these roads through these mountains. started turning green yet? Oh yeah, they're all green. Everything we've seen today has been green. 
Look at those mountain peaks in the distance. crazy how the terrain is back to desertous. We're fixing to get off. So it's a rough road ahead, honey. And we're going to get off at the Loves here. Yeah, just a hair below a half a tank. Oh, well, we timed that good then. Yep. Let's turn slow. Gotta come to a stop first, baby. Thank goodness. So we're gonna get on this frontage road. There's that Argosy from the Oh um, yeah. Visitors place. For one mile. Yeah, there can't be very many of them on the road. And especially since it was blue like that. Yep. Because that's not one of the typical colors. Somebody's got a VW bus or Volkswagen bus. Isn't that what they call them? Yep. That's cool looking. All right, we're going to have to be patient and wait our turn. I think what I'm going to do is park right here and wait for a spot and get some lunch. In 500 feet, Not at Chester's. Alright, like Cindy showed y'all, we're stopped at the Love's Travel Center. $162.21. The regular price was $363. I did use my Love's um, app and got $0.10 cents off, so I got it for $353. I add my stay bill and we are going down the road. All right, let's get back on the highway or interstate and see where we end up for the night. Mile. Merge onto I 40 West. All right, since we pulled back out onto I 40, the wind has really picked up. And if you could put in the comments, can you tell that I finally had a good scrubby at the. Uh, <laughs> at the, uh, the gas station and the windows cleanish. Hey, it's a lot better on my side than it was. I'm sorry y'all were having to look through all that. How many more miles till we go up 93? 7.5 miles exit 48 will put us on Highway 93. And we'll be stopping along 93 somewhere this evening for the night but just letting you know the wind picked up oh my goodness these roads have gotten horrible well, they've gotten better coming through kingsman the roads 93 through kingsman was absolutely it was all i could do to hang on i was about to send cindy to lean up against the cupboards to keep the dishes in it was awful <laughs> Well, and we went down that 6% grade yeah. for one mile. I think it was more than 6%. It was bad. I didn't film because I was hanging on. Wonder if these people got a speeding ticket or if they're broke down. Because after these roads, they might be broke down. No, uh, I'd say if it takes two cops, and they're searching the car. Oh, yeah, somebody right. Pouring liquor out on the ground. <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. Not the three Harley Davisons. The mountain work. The mountain work? I don't know what it's called. Ooh, downhill grain. I didn't see a sign either. Uh, this is uh, the Lake Mead Recreation Area. So Cindy finally found us a good place to boondock. Yeah, we were gonna try to stay at like a gas station or truck stop because 
as you've seen, there's not a lot of, well, the towns here are really small and a lot of them don't allow you to overnight and parking lots and stuff. So we have found, are we gonna keep it a secret? No, go ahead and tell them, we'll show them when we get there, we're close. We are, have found a casino to stay at tonight. Don't it tell is, them, don't tell them oh, which one. They'll, okay. They'll have to wait and see when we get there. But this is the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Yeah, and I haven't seen Lake Mead. Hoover Dam and the state border the same distance. So look at this view. Now we're going down another 6% grade for a couple of miles. This is what, the third or fourth one? Third. Third. And we're actually gonna be passing the Hoover Dam. I don't know if I can get any pictures or anything of it. Is that like a picnic area over there? Yeah, it's the White Rock Canyon Trailhead Access. Oh, cool. But how cold did you say it was supposed to get down tonight? The fifties? Yeah. Mid fifties, I think. I'll, well, it should be right down We're here. We're three miles from the dam and the um, state sign. In a quarter mile, continue on to Iowa. Right, half a mile to the state sign. I'm too busy trying to look for the Hoover Dam. Well, we cross over the river. The Hoover Dam, when we when we hit the state side, the Hoover Dam on the river should be to your, uh, your side. I wonder if it's... Up, yeah, it is. Is it? Yep. Hoover Dam. Oh, wow, that's awesome looking. All right, here's your Nevada sign. Oh, look at all these people on this walkway. Yeah, here's your Nevada sign. You see it? Yes, I see it. That's where all those people park to go. This is the tallest climb we've ever made. I've got it floored. We're going 45 miles an hour. The 18 wheelers behind wow. me have on their flat, their hazards, and they're barely moving. Boulder City. quite a climb. <laughs> We're full of adventure today. But what goes up must go down. Yep. Right, hold up a second. I didn't see anything that said me. Right, here's a reason why you need to have two different GPS systems. For the last 10 minutes, this one keeps recalculating, finding itself, but the Lincoln Drive dash has stayed consistent the whole time. Road. So 
So you're going to go under. Turn right onto the Boulder City South Ramp. Boulder City has spent a lot of money on their overpasses and stuff. In 1,000 feet, turn left. So you think this is the elongated parking or that over there? They said it's highway. between the Chevron and the... Well, that says do not enter. Well, so you don't enter that way. this over here that looks well there's some rvs over there too auto fueling ho truck long term Turn left. holiday in long term truck parking we're not doing long term though they've got trucks over here they've got rv parking right here Turn right, then turn left. Oh, okay, I see the road. RV parking now. I wonder if you're going in. Take the next right, then turn left onto Railroad Pass Because you see road. how there's... Yeah, I can go around. Right now. I'm going to have to disconnect the Jeep. Look at this place. Turn left onto Railroad Pass Casino Road. Tesla, Tesla Chargers. Chargers left onto Railroad Pass Casino Road. Yep. Pretty cool. Looks like a safe place for the night. All right. Day 10 is in the wraps. In the wraps? Day 10's all wrapped up. It's something. <laughs> We are staying the night at Railroad Pass Casino and they've got two hotels, a Ramada Inn, a Holiday Inn Express, sandwich shop, they got two restaurants inside and the most expensive gas of the year, their Chevron is $4.56. If you don't need gas, if you need electric, they got a crap ton of Tesla chargers and look at the mountains absolutely beautiful so we may take a video or two inside so don't click off right away because there may be a little more video left but tomorrow we're going to what campground yes well <laughs> i think it i don't know i don't want to speculate what city is it in hurricane we're going hurricane. to hurricane era nevada utah, utah. We're going to Hurricane Utah <laughs> tomorrow, and we're gonna spend three nights. Do I know that much? Yes, okay. you know that much. We're gonna spend three nights, and we're gonna go to Zion. I know that too, don't I? Okay. Today we drove 320, 323 miles. So it was a nice long day, but oh my gosh, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It was, and it really didn't get bumpy until we got to um, Kingsman. 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 <laughs> We're going to have to start this. <laughs> nope. This is good. We'll wrap it up in a second. So we're delirious. It's been a long day. We'll, we'll eventually get there. But tell them why we decided to drive the extra 60 miles. So I picked out a couple of um, gas stations slash truck stops and um all of the rest areas on this stretch are really just basically for truckers to pull off and sleep and we were kind of wrapping our day up early because we've been in and out of time changes and all that so i didn't feel right about stopping at a I think it was a pilot that we were going to stop. It was a stop Travel at. America and a pilot and a no-name gas station. Yeah, and we were going to be wrapping up around four o'clock their time here, and 
I just didn't feel right about to a taking up a spot in their parking lot and be taking up a trucker spot so this has trucker parking down over there is trucker parking but i want to show you something real quick cindy did call the manager here and talk to them so you can see the trucker parking over there that is the truck parking for the gas station but this place has specific rv parking so we came here so we weren't taking any spots from the truckers tomorrow day 11 will be a short drive and we'll take you along we're going to go into the hotel to the restaurant in the hotel casino and uh, if there's something interesting we may show you a little bit oh and the spots here were a little short we're 35 feet and is there maybe maybe 40 foot long so we disconnected the jeep and parked her right there so i'll have to reconnect it in the morning